We need to stop that conversation to bring some new developments on our breaking news tonight. Iranian news is now reporting an explosion was heard northwest of a city named Isfahan. The cause of this explosion is still unknown. Let's bring in CNN international diplomatic editor Nick Robertson. He's in Jerusalem tonight. Well, Nick, what do we know about this? Yeah, John, we've been tracking a number of reports that have been coming out of a number of locations in Iran over the past several hours. And this is the first time now that the Iranian news agency Fars is confirming that explosions have been heard around Isfahan, several hundred miles away from Tehran. But this uh, city is a city that has multiple military bases around it and also has one of Iran's principal nuclear research facilities. Now, we don't know the details of precisely where these explosions are being reported, but we are seeing other details indicative tonight of what may de be developing in the skies above Iran. We know that uh, we're looking at flight radar flight tracking, that a number of flights have diverted their flights over the skies and away from the skies of Iran this evening. We also understand that a NOTAM, a no-fly zone, has been declared in the west of Iran as well. There are a number of other cities where we've heard uh, from local sources on the ground, locally reported, unconfirmed by us, that there have been other explosions. We can also say that earlier on this evening, a number of small earthquakes were detected in Iran. All of these different developments, uh, John, we're trying to piece together to give a complete picture of what is happening. Of course, um, there has been huge expectation that Israel was going to strike back in a decisive way um, at Iran. Indeed, Prime Minister Netanyahu said just a couple of days ago that that would be happening. Um, uh, and the British Foreign Secretary indicated he understood there would be strikes in Iran. What we are trying to assess right now is um, who is behind these explosions reported in Isfahan, um, what the bigger picture is adding up to at the moment, um, and, 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 and therefore the implications that this might lead to. I think we're at the very leading edge here, John, of trying to get a solid picture of what is happening in Iran tonight. But airspace affected explosions reported around a significant city with significant bases and a major nuclear research facility in Iran tonight, John. And, Nick, a second Iranian media outlet now reporting that in Isfahan that there have been significant uh, strikes there. So let's stay with it. You mentioned we've been expecting this. Just for our viewers, i just go through the time. I remember back on April 1st, Israel was blamed uh, for an attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. And then, as Nick noted, uh, back last Saturday on the 13th, Iran deployed more than 300 drones and other uh, aerial weapons to attack on Israel. After that, Nick, the President of the United States, who helped the United States, Britain, other Western allies, helped repel the Iranian attack. And the appeal from President Biden to Israel was, you proved they couldn't hit you. You know, don't do anything provocative. Don't do anything that further escalates a region already on end. Prime Minister Netanyahu has not listened to the President of the United States when it comes to the Hamas conflict. Uh, is it safe to say it appears he's not listening to him here? Um, John, I think what it's safe to say at the moment is that it appears as in all likelihood that Israel has struck Iran. Now, has, if this has happened, has Israel, has the prime minister dialed back what he might have otherwise planned? Certainly, there's been a huge international push. You had the British foreign secretary, the German foreign secretary were here a couple of days ago with repeating that message to all the ministers they met, the prime minister, the defense minister, the foreign minister, the president of, of Israel. Do not escalate the situation, but both seem to accept that Israel was going to go ahead, John. Nick Robinson for us, live in Jerusalem with the early reporting. Nick, appreciate that hustle very much. Our coverage will continue.